Well, obviously, we're all very, very disappointed, but I'd like to say that I'm very, very proud of what our team was able to accomplish this year uh, to win 14 games, um, win the SEC, you know, win the Orange Bowl, have an opportunity to play for the national championship. Um, <laughs> really proud of our players, really proud of our team. And I don't think that, you know, one game necessarily defines who you are, uh, and that's certainly what I'd like for our players to uh, no, I think you learn a lot from experiences like this. Uh, we certainly didn't play very well tonight, and, you know, we had some issues. We couldn't get off the field on third down. We gave up a couple big-time explosive plays on third down, third down and 13, third down and nine. Um, you know, we had plenty of opportunities to score offensively, uh, have the ball at the one-yard line, get a penalty, end up kicking a field goal, have it down there a couple more times do a fake field goal and go for it on fourth down and don't make it, get stopped on the goal line on the one-yard line another time. So um, got to congratulate Clemson. They did a very, very good job. Uh, quarterback's really good. Their skilled players are really good. Um, you know, we actually stopped the run pretty well and created enough third down situations. We just couldn't get off the field on third down. We couldn't capitalize on our opportunities that we had on offense. But, you know, the seniors, you know, on this team um, have done a – fantastic job of representing the University of Alabama. I think they've won 50-some games or whatever since they've been here, and uh, they've been a class group and provided a lot of leadership and a lot of good examples for our young players on our team, and we certainly appreciate them and wish them well in their future. We have two student athletes with us, Tua Tonga Viola and Xavier McKinney. We've got Microphone holders on either side will take questions. For the student athletes first, please raise your hand and give us your name and affiliation. We'll start over here to my left on the front row. Hi, Tom Fitzgerald, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, Tua, what was Clemson doing to confuse you sp specifically on the two interception plays? No, I don't think it was anything that they were doing that that stopped us. That was totally a bad, bad decision. It was a poor decision on my part. You know, I just think we came out and, you know, we, we were killing ourselves. Um, we shot ourselves in the foot, you know, by me throwing that interception for a touchdown and and then, you know, not finishing drives the way we wanted to. Just didn't go the way we wanted to. So. We're going to stay in the front row. Um, this Joel Anderson, ESPN. Uh, this is either for Nick or Xavier. I'm, obviously, you knew coming in that Trevor Lawrence was, you know, not just a freshman at this point in the season anymore, but um, what did you think from actually getting out there and seeing what he did out there on the field tonight? Well, no surprise to me. You know, I think he's played extremely well all year long. Um, you know, we knew that their receiver, their receiving core was probably the most talented that we've seen as a group, you know, all year long. Uh, eight, five, 13, um, those guys, you know, are really, really talented guys. And again, I said it earlier, you know, we had opportunities to get off the field on third down and we couldn't we couldn't get off the field. I mean, they were like eight of 11 at one point in time, 10 for 15 for the game. Um, and we gave up big plays, not just first downs, but we gave up big plays. So um, that and the combination of us not finishing drives. I mean, when you look at the stats of the game, um, and they basically had the ball for the last 10 minutes of the game. But if you look at the, the stats of the game, you know, their yards and all that are fairly equal. Uh, but the score, because of turnovers, not finishing drives in the red zone, not getting off the field on third down, giving up explosive plays, score doesn't indicate anything like that. Okay, we'll go here in the front row. Again, keep your questions to the student athletes, please. Uh, Josh Tubal from Associated Press. Uh, Tua, what, what did you see as the issues for you guys in the red zone? We just weren't executing what we were, what the plays were. Um, I mean, we just couldn't punch it in. Um, that's, that's basically all it was. Go over here to the second row on my left. AJ Spur, 90.7. Xavier, was the team you saw out on the field different from the team you watched on film? No, they, we just didn't execute. Um, we didn't do, we had a lot of busts, uh, a lot of, a lot of things that we could have did better. Um, and that's, that's basically it. We're going to stay, we're going to go mo one more back into the third row, I believe. Uh, Xavier and Mark Tracy, New York Times. 
um, just ask you to expand on that a little bit. Um, what did you see from Trevor that maybe you guys hadn't seen from any other quarterbacks that you faced this year? Uh, he, I mean, he could throw the ball well. Um, there was nothing really different. Uh, a lot of it was what we were doing. Um, a lot of stuff that <clears throat> that we didn't execute. Um, so I feel like th that was just mainly on our part and uh, what we were doing. Come over here right in the middle. Uh, RunnerSavenAL.com. <laughs> Nick, I mean, you've never experienced a loss like this at Alabama. What was what was going through your head as it was transpiring? And, um, you know, what were some of the discussions, especially with some of the defensive lapses that were happening and also um, issues with the uh, special teams, um, you know, uh, especially with the field goal kicking units. We're going to pause that question. We're going to finish with the student athletes. Go over here to our left, please. <laughs> we went through this last time, you know, at the Orange Bowl. Mm -hmm. These guys do not take instruction very well. I'm trying. Over here to our left. Uh, this is a question for Xavier and Tua. This team coming in here 14-0 really epitomized, I think, the resiliency that you want to see in an ideal scenario. Um, what do you take away from this season and taking away from tonight? Are there things that you feel like you want to focus on coming out of this? Xavier, let's start with you. Xavier, let's start with you. Uh, well, of course, we had a great season. Um, we didn't, it didn't end the way we wanted it to end. Um, a lot of that uh, defensively, uh, I blame myself a lot for, for how we played today. Um, and... Uh, I, I just know me personally that uh, I'm gonna try my hardest and, and and make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, but I thought we played, we had we had a great season. It just didn't end the way we wanted it to end. Tua. Yeah. Um, you know, just like what Xavier said, we had a great season, but just five words: good is not good enough. We didn't finish the way we wanted to finish. We didn't do the things we we needed to do to execute and be successful in this game. And, that's all it is. We're going to take our last question for the student athletes right here in the front row. Steve Moulton, 97.7 The Zone, Xavier, and to uh, uh, would like to know what was said in the locker room post game, specifically with the seniors as well. Maybe a final message to the seniors. Start with you, Tua. Well, it wasn't it wasn't anything different, you know, um, from the seniors, from Coach Saban. You know, just go out there. We got to we got to execute play at a fast level, high level of intensity, focus on what you got to do play by play, you know, and that was it. We just got to go out there and just do what we do. Xavier? Uh, we, I mean, every game, we treat every game the same. Uh, we know we try to come out there and play hard every night, uh, every Saturday, every whenever we play. Uh, it's never a, a different a different way how we play. Um, there's always one way, and and... That's that's the Bama way. So uh, it's it's never uh, uh, we feel differently about how we're gonna play. We we know how we should play and how we're expect, expected to play. Thanks to both of our student athletes, we're gonna let them head back to the locker room. Do you attribute the number of mistakes and the lack of execution? Well, you know, first of all, you got to give Clemson a little bit of credit. They got a real they have a really good team. Um, I think the responsibility for us not playing well really starts with me. Um, you know, we obviously didn't go out there and they did do some things that we weren't prepared for, but you always expect that. A um, couple bunch passes that Oklahoma ran and some other people that, you know, uh, we had to make adjustments to at halftime. And, um, but, you know, I thought the players prepared well for this game. Um, and I think that you know, they just got outperformed. It wasn't like we just didn't cover a guy. I mean, we tried to cover number eight. He caught the ball, uh, made a big play. We were in three deep zone when number five catches a ball and runs, you know, 50 yards, 60 yards for a touchdown. Guy doesn't play the deep third properly. Um, so, you know, those responsibilities are start with me, uh, our staff, and all the coaches who try to get these guys ready. And when we don't play well, I feel like that's a reflection on the job that we did, the job that I did. And, um, you know, so, but, you know, Clemson did a really, really good job. I mean, I know the score. There's a lot of good things that our team did out there to, today, especially on offense. 
And we did stop the run on defense, but we couldn't get off the field on third down. So, I mean, sometimes we just didn't get them covered. A um, couple times we made some errors on things that they did that we had not practiced that were difficult. Um, and they're pretty good. Go back here in the middle, second row. Nick, again, uh, you know, you haven't experienced a loss like this in your tenure. What was going through your head as it was unfolding? And also, do you think some of the longstanding issues maybe were exposed? The field goal kicking forcing you into decisions maybe that you might not want to make, and also the secondary depth um, being a, a problem that kind of came to the surface in this game. Well, we have we have had some issues with you know the guys that you know are not out there playing, and I think sometimes you have to be fortunate because when you play against good teams, um, you need that depth and you need those people. Um, I, I think it was a poor decision on my part not to kick the field goal. You know, the first drive of the second half, uh, we thought we had a really really good fake, and somebody didn't block the guy they were supposed to to block, so it didn't work. Uh, so it was a bad call. It's always that way. Um, we, we didn't finish drives in the red zone because we could have got right back in the game now. I mean, we had the ball down there three times and, you know, didn't score uh, a point. Didn't score a point. We had fake field goal, went for it on fourth down twice, had the ball on the one-yard line. So, I mean, this game could have been a little different if we would have finished things a little better. But... Um, you know, we didn't play well enough on defense to win because if you can't get off the field on third down, you're going to have a hard time when you're playing against a good team. We're going to go to Mark Tracy. But there was nothing going through my head except what can I do to help our team play better the next play? How can we? And we just kept not being able to finish things the way we wanted to. And I feel like it's my responsibility that those things didn't happen properly. We're going to move over to our left, Mark Tracy. Uh, Coach, we've known for some time in college football that – I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, we've known for some time in college football that, you know, true freshmen uh, are very much able to contribute, including, of course, on your teams. Um, that said, with Trevor Lawrence doing this uh, this year, I'm wondering if how you've seen it evolve in college football where even in your in past decade, say, where even, you know, your – where even the most recent recruiting class you bring in can make such a huge difference uh, at the end of the year? Well, Trevor Lawrence is a special talent. Um, I saw him when he was a sophomore, and he was a special player, you know, as a sophomore in high school. Um, and he's playing in a good system and a good scheme uh, that's somewhat similar to what he played in high school. And I think that well, I got this asked at the press conference the other day, why do more freshmen, are they able to play, especially at quarterback? Um, and I think there's a, a greater similarity with the offense that they grow up with and the offense that they, they play in college. So there's a lot more similarities. And I think the quarterback position is a little easier now because it's not all drop back oriented. RPOs have made it very simple, you know, for the quarterback in a lot of ways. So um, not a surprise to me, and I think you'll see more and more, you know, young quarterbacks be able to contribute early on because of those similarities in their training. Their training is better. We have seven-on-sevens all over the country. We've got great quarterback coaches that help these guys develop early in their careers. Um, but Trevor has always been a special talent in my mind and doesn't surprise me. Uh, he's got the right stuff as a person, and, you know, he's played phenomenally well for his team this year. We're going to stay over here on our left, move up a row. Nick Dan, who's been from The Athletic. I noticed when you were leaving the field, you were looking over your notes. I wondered what you were seeing there, what you were thinking. And also, like I asked the players, um, this team, I think, did show great resiliency all through the season. What is your takeaway from this team and maybe what you want to focus on moving forward with them? Well, I, I sort of made the same opening comments that I made to our team. You know, I, I told them how proud I was of what they were able to accomplish. I know how disappointed we all are and they are in the way we didn't finish uh, and the way we performed, you know, in this particular game. 
but they accomplished a lot, and we're really proud of them. You know, winning the SEC, winning the Orange Bowl, and winning 14 games. I mean, um, our seniors have done a phenomenal job. I think they've won like 54 games in their career or whatever. Um, so one game doesn't define who you are. But I also told the players that sometimes we learn more when things don't go well, um, when we lose. Um, you have to learn how to lose as well as how you win. Uh, and there's a lot of lessons for us to learn from the experience that we had in this game, whether you're a senior who's leaving or whether you're a player who's coming back and you see that we have work to do. We're going to take two more questions. Our first one is right here in the front row. Nick, Phil Barber, Santa Rosa, Press Democrat. With that defensive line of yours, were you surprised you weren't able to generate more consistent pressure on Lawrence? And did you feel that he got more comfortable as the game went on because of that? Well, I thought that if we were going to have an opportunity, um, the best way to defend them is to rush four guys and play different kinds of coverages and when we rushed four guys, we didn't get a lot of pressure. Their offensive line did, did a good job. Uh, he was very comfortable in the pocket, had time to throw, um, and we didn't get him covered very well on the back end at times. So um, the combination of those things, I think, really, you know, made it more difficult for us because one of the things that, that they do extremely well with the players that they have, the mismatch, eight and five outside, is when you play middle of the field coverage and you try to pressure, they've been they've been very successful against that all year long. And Trevor Lawrence is very good at throwing throwing the fade ball, um, back shoulders, whatever it is. And their two guys are really really good at um, making plays on the 50-50 balls, which we knew would be a big part of what we needed to do well in this game. And I think maybe we made one play on a 50-50 ball and got one other pass interference. Last question for Marty. Right there in the middle, second row. Hi, Coach. Marty Smith, ESPN. You said to me in the past that you tend to remember the losses much more than the wins. Outside of the scoreboard, what do you think you'll remember most about tonight? Um, I just have a feeling that I didn't do a very good job um, for our team, with our team, um, giving them the best opportunity to be successful. I always feel that way. Uh, even sometimes when we win, I think there's things that we could do better or that I could have done better. Uh, but particularly in this case, um, never really ever got comfortable with um, what we needed to do to win this game, um, especially on defense, especially the matchups we had in our secondary versus their receivers. Uh, that was something that was, you know, kind of, bothering me going into the game uh, and as the game unfolded um, it worked out that those matchups were a big difference in the game coach thanks very much all right thank you and uh, as always I appreciate I know you all think I don't like the press but I really do love you for what you do to um, give a lot of positive self-gratification to a lot of our players by recognizing the things that they do well and uh, we certainly appreciate all the interest you create for our sport. And college football is a great game and something that's great for these young people to be able to learn a lot of lessons in life. So we appreciate you so much for that. Thank you.